Hello and welcome to Ascension Energies, well, sorry, 2024 Ascension Energies Mastery. This will be episode two and we're going to pick up, of course, where we left off because nothing comes from nothing. Everything is gradual um, from where we've been to where we're going, right? So if you remember last week, we talked about healing that Chiron wound. Well, <clears throat> Because Chiron is in Aries, Aries is in the North Node. The North Node is about fulfilling your destiny. And now there's fire breathing into you, Aries, <laughs> about that personal self-mastery and being able to accomplish the things that you had designed for yourself prior to coming into this life that were expanded upon by your desires and your preferences while you've been in this life. So essentially, that's the same as to say, it's time to you, for you to get into action with being able to produce, produce or allow to manifest. That's better. It's not produce. It's not produce. We're past that production energy now. We're now in an energy of inspired action. We are now in an energy of being able to allow, understanding we are allowing energy to manifest through us. So if that's the way things work and they do in order for you to manifest something it comes through your body and in order for it to be your dreams you must be in a positive attitude and in harmony with your dreams and the direction being given to you by your higher self okay that's the inspired action part all right so chiron wound let's just back up there for just a moment that chiron wound is going to be something that has been so large and so loud and so traumatic even, and I don't mean to like, you know, to, to demean tra trauma, but it, it will have felt so traumatic inside of your body. And it will have felt like you haven't been able to ever manifest out manifest it. You haven't been able to sufficiently be able to cover it up. You haven't been sufficiently able to, um, heal it and let it free most likely. Okay. And the closer you get, or the more you are walking towards fulfilling that destiny, the louder this Chiron wound is getting because it is time to let it go in order to fulfill. It is this bridge between and this key to unlocking our true potential. Okay, so it's your deepest wound. Your deepest wound, I'm sure you've heard the quote, and I don't know where it's come from, where it came from, so I apologize for that. But I I think I heard it. Um, or maybe most famously recently on, uh, a wrinkle in time. And, uh, she says, I think it was Oprah who said the light, maybe it's no, no, it was that, it was the girl who played Mindy, right? She's the one that said it, even though she wasn't talking, she was quoting, right? She was like, she's talking, but she's quoting Rumi when she says the wound is where the light comes in, right? Okay. That's what it is. And maybe I did reference that in the last video. But here we are, where we get to allow the light to shine through us where once had been that wound. So if you listened to that last video, you will have known that this the key to being able to access that wound um, is looking at the house that your Chiron is in and also the house that your moon is in because the moon represents the unseen energies. The moon represents... Um, what's behind the veil for you, the subconscious. Okay. So that's why the moon, the, what your, what house your moon is in and what house your Chiron in. And when you merge what both of those represent, you're going to get the picture of what wound your Chiron wound is, and now have the fullness of it to be able to identify it and to be able to be present with it so that it can pass through without judgment, without forcing, right? Okay, so now why am I bringing this up aside from the fact that it is what we need to do, but now Chiron is going to conjunct the North Node on February 19th. Okay, so when this video lands, it will be the week of 11, February 11th through the 17th. So that wound may be getting louder and louder and louder and louder and more painful. Okay, and if you watch my tarot reading that I had done for this week, um, that would have been posted last uh, Thursday on my channel, then you would see that there was a call to be able to go underneath, to be able to go down into our personal underworld with this, um, this conjunction of 
Mars and Pluto and Pluto being Hades, the ruler of the underworld, right? And that, that role of, of Pluto is about seeing what's out of whack seeing what's underneath that needs to be adjusted before you go any further. Okay. So I would say, and it got pretty big. Like at first it was like this minor adjustment that was coming on the cards. And then by the end of the reading, it was like, I think this is going to be a big deal. And now I realize, of course, it's a big deal. What we're talking about is healing the Chiron wound. So I strongly encourage you to go back and watch that because now once you have done that, and it is literally light performing energetic surgery on yourself and you must be very gentle with the process of of releasing and be very gentle with the process of healing knowing noticing that that was a wound that now needs to be nurtured that space within you okay so now let's what we want to talk about here is is about um how to stabilize so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share with you and you'll see why I'm going to share with you some more Chiron story that, that coincides with the story and how they work together of Prometheus. Okay. And then we're going to bring, bring Zeus into the picture. And why do I use Greek mythology? Well, because first of all, it's fascinating, and interesting to be able to use, well, the planets are named after the gods. So the planets that we know, um, Saturn, Mars, these are Jupiter, Venus, these are the Roman names of, um, of the planets, but we're take the Romans took from Greek mythology. Okay. They, it was derived from the original Greek mythology. So these planets are essentially the energies that the planets hold are personified or are, are the personalities of the gods. Okay. So it's not just because it's interesting to do, but also this was a way one of the reasons and perspectives of looking at Greek mythology, it's not the only perspective, but one of the perspectives of looking at Greek mythology is that they were describing the natural forces of the universe through the personification, right? Making them people. Um, it's also why the gods mated with so many different gods and even humans, because when, when two forces come together, they create a new force. Okay. And new forces were continually being birthed, but that's the same as to say co-creation that we're doing now as we merge individually, as each of us are merging and choosing the energy that we are going to embody. And maybe it's sorrow, maybe it's joy and delight. Maybe it's curiosity and fascination. Maybe it's lust and love, lust or love. <laughs> um, uh, uh, cause I don't think that, that the, the, the necessarily are the same. Um, but, but you see how I'm, I'm talking about these different energies, even the energy of promises, the energy of, um, of weather, the energy, all of these different things. And even the weather has different energies within that subcategories. Right. But my, my, my point here is, is that when you merge more than one energy together, you get another energy. So we all have these different energies that are inside of our bodies and depending on which one we want to amplify or focus upon, and we now have some curiosity or interest in adding more to that from maybe what we're paying attention to, like what we're watching, what we're learning about, what we're actively doing, these kind of things we're adding to that energy. Maybe we're getting guidance from our, our guides and our higher self. We're getting downloads. So that pure energy of your higher self, this knowledge coming from the quantum field is now merging with the energy that you have in your body. And this is why one person could not have the answers or the truth for every person, because the energies I'm holding, the questions I'm asking, the intentions that I have are different than what you're holding, your intentions maybe, and what your purpose is. Okay. So you're going to have your own signature. I'm going to have my own signature. And so maybe if we ask the same question, we would get a different or at least a slightly different answer because of the energies that are merging together, right? So we can guide each other. We can support each other. We can talk about, um, at, uh, you know, us being students of our higher self and coming to new understandings, but there isn't an absolute perfected answer for everything, things need to be experienced. Questions need to be asked in order for new energies to be merged 
and then come up with a solution, which is what the what the quantum field is all about, is though as holding the potentials for new solutions to be birthed. This is the expansion of the universe. Okay, so I'm off on a little kick there. Uh, but let's talk about Chiron and Prometheus for just a moment. Okay, so there are two stories merge. If you remember from the, the end of the last one, um, I was saying that uh, that it was Prometheus that turned Chiron into a star constellation. Um, in honor of him being a god, he put him back in the skies when he when Chiron passed away. Okay, and no coincidence, we're walking into you know this Aquarian energy now. The Earth herself is in Aquarian energy. We're going to get into that a little bit deeper here. Okay, so we're going to learn about um, we're going to learn about about <laughs> what are we learning about? Good gosh, we're learning about how the heavens. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry. Give me just a moment. Pondering here. Let's just, we're going to learn about the way that things have been and the way that we're beginning to do things a little bit different. Okay. And because we're now bridging the wounded version of ourself is, is purging and the God self is activating so we're we what we can expect is even how we experience the universe has to be different so even this greek mythology of what we have we understood things to be and we can see a parallel as we dive in we can see a parallel of how it matches our societies and the way things have been done for the last three thousand years which is when um he said wrote the theology the theogony and which is the original writings of of um, Greek mythology so so now he wrote that at the end of the dark ages of the yeah it was the end of the dark ages for the Greek civilization ancient civil ancient Greece so so what we're gonna learn about is how what where we have been how things had been expected to be um, experienced in the universe and how now we're bringing in the God self in order to be able to, to have completely new experiences um, as a race in humanity, as the earth herself has new experiences, it'll be really fascinating to see, you know, in the next 50, 60, 80 years, where we're at as this progression takes place of something entirely different going from where we had been, which I believe was a Piscean energy into now this Aquarian energy, which is weird because does that mean we're going backwards? I don't know about that. I, I'm not an astrologer. I just get really fascinated with this stuff. I feel the energies. I'm an intuitive feel into the energies and start doing some research and understanding why I'm feeling what I'm feeling and have decided that I'd like to share that with you guys so that we can master our ability to create our dreams, to understand that we are and have been for a long time, but it's going to be faster and how to get more specific with that so that we can experience the abundance that we have all desired to experience because this is an eight year. It's all about abundance through personal power. Okay. All right. So so now we knew about, we knew that Prometheus is the one that turned, um, that turned Chiron into a star constellation to put him back in the skies and honor him as a God, because he had, he had given up his immortality and had given his, his immortality to Prometheus. And what's fascinating about this is Prometheus is Aquarius. That's right. Prometheus is Aquarius energy. So we have a lot to learn here from him. Let's go into Prometheus' story, okay? And Chiron is the is the go-between, the bridge between. He's temperance, okay? So let's talk about Chi uh, about Prometheus' story if we have a lot to learn from him. Prometheus was a um, was a uh, a titan. He wasn't a god. He was a titan, okay? And when the Olympians were, were which are headed up by Zeus, uh, were fighting the titans. There were two Titans that did not fight with the, against the Olympians. And that was Prometheus and another one I can't pronounce his name or not, but it starts with the letter E. I know that much. Okay. So, um, so Prometheus and this other, um, Titan were spared of imprisonment. They weren't taken prisoners of war. Um, and they were in spared of imprisonment and Prometheus went on to then create man. So in Greek mythology, it wasn't gods that created man. It was Prometheus, a Titan. 
So Zeus, being the almighty that he is, of you know, the ruler of the skies, the heavens, he's also ruler of oath and order and um, weather. And so he's he's a ruler of, of a lot of things. Uh, so he says, and of course we know he's the head of, like I said, the head of the Olympians. He's the master. And that's why he carries the master bolt, right? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, he, so Zeus says, okay, well, you've created these humans. You've created man. And now um, that they exist, they must pay homage to me. They must bring me sacrifice and to, to honor me. Okay. So um, just by being alive. Now we see that like what in the government and taxes in which, you know, I agree with taxes that we should all, you know, be supportive of, you know, what's best for, um, you know, like roads and, and, and things like that, schools and, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, so, so the, the point here is, is that um, we could, we could go down on a whole another road on that one. But um, the point is, is because you're alive, you must now pay. Okay. So Prometheus being the creator of, uh, man, at the, when it came down to the first sacrifice given to Zeus from man, Prometheus decided that he was going to, um, he was going to trick Zeus. And when they cut up the fatted cow, um, because that's what their monetary system was back then, uh, when he cut him up, he, Prometheus covered the bones with fat so that it would appear that it would be meaty underneath the fat, right? And then he covered the meat with hide so of the of the animal so it would appear that the bones would be under the hide that this would be the throwaway pile and so when zeus chose he was told he could he could choose um you know prometheus invited him to choose he chose the fattier portion which then ended up just being bones and zeus knew it he knew prometheus was tricking him but he chose it anyway and then he decided to go ahead and punish man not prometheus Okay, so he took fire away from man. Prometheus didn't like this. Um, and he stole fire back by igniting um, a torch from the sun and gave fire back to man. Doesn't make Zeus very happy. He's gone against him, right? So the next offense was, uh, let's see. So he, oh, that's what it was. So he stole it, but that was the offense. That's what the offense was. He stole the fire for um for man so now prometheus it gets in really big trouble and here's where it really starts to go uh you know and get really kind of in there for me it, it did when I, you know as i was reading this and um and understanding you know the mythology behind all of this i'm just like yeah this this rings really true for what the collective has been experiencing for um, quite some time. And that is somebody went against the order of the civilization, what was supposed to be by command of a God, somebody who's above everybody else. And Zeus invokes his servants. He calls his servants. His servants' names are force and violence. <laughs> okay. Force and violence. He calls them to go apprehend Prometheus. He then chains Prometheus up to a column and or a pillar and has him there for eternity or until a mortal can break the spell, but has a eagle come and eat his liver out. And then every night his liver grows back and the eagle goes back so that he's to live this torture on a, on a daily cycle for eternity, or again, like I said, until a mortal can break the spell. So when it came time for Chiron's story, and Chiron is um, is now is now um, up against you know this excruciating pain since he had gotten the arrow of poison, and it was you know god poison, so it couldn't be cured, and um, he's a god at that point so he can't die and so he's just in this excruciating pain and hercules was the one who accidentally shot the arrow through its intended target and it hit um chiron so chiron was wounded so when it came to trying to decide what needed to happen and chiron being the healer himself that he was um wasn't able to heal us he decided that what needed to happen was he had to give up his immortality and since he was friends with um, Prometheus, he decided to trade his immortality 
for the freedom of Prometheus. And so Hercules was able to help mend. Um, and it, it was an accident, but still, you know, what, you know, what took place was a, I don't know if we call it a wrongdoing, but, but something, not an, an undesired outcome based on his actions, he was able to support the, the, you know, something positive to come out of this. And he went and he killed the Eagle, which freed Prometheus. Okay. So here we have now, what we're seeing here is Zeus, what is that like? Okay, Zeus being like this old man in the sky. We have like old people, old men been ruling, you know, the, the nations for in the world for, for how long? And uh, you have to pay just to be, you know, because you're alive. And we have all of these things about, we have violence and force. We have all of these things that we had been experiencing on this planet for the last 3,000 years. And we're moving away from that. Again, we're moving away from needing. What are we? What is the biggest thing we're moving away from here? What is the biggest point of this? The biggest point here is that built within these stories, Zeus's rule, okay, is that every person, every being, whether you're a god or whether you're, and I'm speaking, you know, um, Greek gods, okay, um, mythology here. So whether you're a god or whether you're a human, Oh, I forgot. I forgot a part of that story. Whether you're, hold, I'll finish that statement. Whether you're a God or whether you're a human, you have to adhere to the rules of society in order for it to be organized by what he has deemed to be appropriate. And what we've been seeing that play out over and over and over again. And it hasn't been going so great. So the thing here, here is, is that the shift that's taking place is that we can't get the answers from outside of ourselves any longer. I the part I forgot about that story though is that not only did did um Zeus punish Prometheus for stealing back the fire, but he also punished man by creating woman. So woman was created by a god and she was made to be beautiful and desirable. She was made to be full of wealth, okay? And she carried with her that jar of all of the evils of the world, all of the negative and dark, heavy emotions of the world. Okay. And that was a curse to man was woman. Again, makes me angry, <laughs> but, but you has, we have seen again over the last 3000 years, how women have had to rise up to become equals or would just be able to stand within their own rights of being human and existing <laughs> and worthy of, of being existing, right? Worthiness simply because we exist. Um, so that's been, you know, definitely at the forefront as, as we're, we're moving towards this, this, uh, uh, new energy, right? Uh, so, okay. So here we are now. Okay. Okay. What I'm saying is built into the story. What I was, had been saying was built into the story is that all of the answers that you needed, everything that was appropriate for you to be, um, uh, what, what, a productive member of society and living within the rule so that, you know, that you don't experience. So it's a rule by fear, which is what we've all been experiencing. It's rule by fear. So you don't experience this torture or this curse or this vengeance, force and violence, you know, things like that to come down and, and rain upon you. Um, you had to adhere to, to, and be obedient to the law. Well, so again, we're talking about bridging. We're talking about now being able to be present within our own selves enough to understand what we desire, owning our worthiness to be able to honor our desire, knowing that how the mechanics of the universe work is that if I desire now desire is devoid of does not hold pure desire does not hold within it angst or anxiousness, doubt or yearning. Those would be uncomfortable emotions not would be are uncomfortable emotions and they're uncomfortable because they're diluting desire. They're watering it down. They're making it less powerful than what it truly is. Okay. So as we're understanding like how like law of attraction works and that our role in this world is to manifest because we're in 3d because thoughts turn to things here and it's not just like i want to manifest like that's really what you're here to do is to manifest and when we and as we're understanding the mechanics of i'm not just this i am also spirit 
I exist in spirit form, which is pure positive energy and my connection to infinite intelligence or the quantum field full of all potential and all information. And within my manifestations, I'm using energy to create more things that create more questions that create more answers, right? So you see how this is really important. It all ties in together, working together. So as we're learning how this, the mechanics of we actually work, we are spirit, we are human, we are both, and our emotions are the detection of how that relationship is going. That's why we have emotions. Okay. So now as we're making this bridge and we have, we're letting go of that Chiron wound, it's really important to have stabilization because there's a lot of shifting taking place. The earth is moving and we're moving. Everything's moving right to a new energy. The way that the Greeks had spelled out the forces of nature and the absolute way that they work, we're finding that nothing is actually absolute. Reality is changeable. Reality is malleable. Reality is, is we can shift it by our consciousness and by our desires. Okay. So it's not absolute. So now we have a, a, this call to stabilize ourselves within. And so there's the answer to the perplexity of how do we move away from answers outside of myself to listening to me, Prometheus understood that his allegiance was not to the ruler of law and the enforcer of law. His allegiance was to his creation. So we've all been experiencing an enormous amount of purging like I've said a million times, we've been purging. We've been letting layer after layer. We have been learning how to release codependent patterns. We have been learning how to um, put ourselves and our own personal interests at the forefront of our life because nobody else can create our life for us. And which sounds selfish, but if you're not filling your cup, how can you be any good for anybody else? And there is a really strong element of collective strength here. And that only comes through the individually being as strong as they can be, right? Pluto shows you where you're a little bit out of whack on that. And that's a good thing to be able to walk through what's not really working within the dreams that I've desired for myself as I begin to produce more and more and more of that, ma that manifestation happening faster. So... But the thing is, the only way, the only way that we're going to be able to bridge this, these consciousnesses from, a, you know, higher state of consciousness from the lower state that we've been is by honoring our creations. We are creators and this will activate the God creator within you, the God spark within you. It feels what feels passionate, what feels interesting, what feels fascinating to you. That is the most important question that you can ask yourself. If you don't know the answer, simply pose the question and you will start to get and notice then the answers that start to come to you. You will get a little bit and a little piece and a little piece. And if you follow that little bit and explore more of what you're interested in and knowing that that's what it takes for you to fully embody this merge between your human self and your higher self is by following your interests putting that at the forefront of what you, mm, mm, what you do, what you think, what you feel, you will also notice at the same time that solutions and answers that come from your higher self are a win, win, win for everybody. Nobody loses when you get an, an answer from your higher self. So when I'm trying to decide what it is that I'm going to do in a particular situation, I have learned to stop, relax, understand that I'm feeling annoyed, frustrated, even angry, that that's not how my higher self feels. Now, it will offer energy to fuel action, right? But I want to be in an action that is obviously in harmony with my higher self that nobody then loses from. So I listen internally 
or I watch internally and I, I, I'll notice an idea. Okay, there's that idea. Solution. Okay, there's that solution. Okay, there's that solution. And when it has this, this sort of like click, 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 where all things are answered even more than I expected answered, even better than I expected answered, and where there's nobody that loses, it's just a win, that's when I know it's an answer from my higher self, okay? That's what you're continually looking for on a regular basis, and you must be able to choose positive emotion by being very honest with what you are feeling in any given moment, having an internal gaze, knowing it used to be I remember years ago people would say okay I'm going to take a moment I'm going to check in I'm just going to I'm I'm going to you know take today and I'm going to check in with myself well that's too late that's definitely not often enough I have found that having a consistent internal eye inward Knowing how I feel in every moment and the moment that I'm feeling uncomfortable, allow myself to feel discomfort completely without judgment, without trying to push it away until it naturally passes. So then my vibration can come up. And if I'm not there, it's okay because sometimes it takes a little while for me to get there, but I know that the option will arise again to be there because that's my natural state is a state of positivity with my higher self, right? So my guides have given me this process of, it's a meditation. It's actually energy work that I have used for years with my clients. Um, and it has been wildly beneficial for them um, to be able to rise to the next version of themselves, to be able to easily purge what's not. It's a natural letting go and an easy um way of letting something new or a new way of being a new way of seeing things a new way of a new a even more developed relationship with the real self um is what has come from from doing this um this this energy work with my clients and i also use it as a meditation for myself and um and it really truly is extraordinarily powerful in stabilizing your own personal energy and building or feeling confident to move forward with what that north node in, is calling for you what your destiny is what you what you feel is your purpose work what you feel is satisfying and is is enjoying enjoyment for you because that's what enhances again what we're looking for is what also enhances the collective without taking the responsibility of the collective on our shoulders we know that the happier happier i am the more joyful that my life experience is, not only will that more of that come in for me, but it sort of spreads joy for others to be able to experience as well. It strengthens joy on the planet. And that's the best way that you can help the collective is by simply enjoying your life. That's why your passions are the answer and your attention to your passions, your allegiance to your passions is the most important thing for you to do okay and that will give you the self mastery that we're all we're looking for so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to give you this meditation okay that will activate the god self within you and it will create that strength of confidence and give you more power to be the hero of your own story now, I'm going to give you the nuts and bolts of this. I am not going to sit here and do a meditation um, for you guys. Um, this will not be like going to a meditative state. I'm going to walk you through this meditation. And it's, that's not what this is going to be. My preference when I'm receiving information is I want to get the information and I want to then use my higher self to be my teacher when I'm applying something. And in this way, it adjusts for you. Okay. So what I'm working with here is the is three chakra points, okay? These points of energy. The first one is your soul star or the seat of your higher self, which is 18 inches above your head. And I see all of these as crystal balls. Now, others will describe these energy centers maybe having different colors. 
If you see them as different colors, great. This is your own personal experience, okay? I'm just giving it to you the way that I have seen it, the way that I have been guided to do. Again, make it yours, okay? So these three energy points, okay? The, the seat of your soul or seat of your higher self, there's, that's not a great book, seat of, seat of the soul. A higher self, right? 18 inches above your head. There is another one, which is your earth star, earth, I think it's earth star. Mm, not sure what exactly it's called, but it's the one 18 inches below your feet in the earth. And then there is another one that they always, every time I'm doing energy work with anyone, they always guide me to this energy center, which is at the top of your spine. So if you imagine your spine being like a staff and this being a crystal ball at the top that goes between the base of your neck and the top of your spine, okay? This crystal ball right there. So from the top one, I imagine that there is liquid, pure liquid light coming down into my crown chakra. And I begin to imagine it filling up my, my forehead, feeling the softness and the warmth relief, um, create relief behind my eyes, in my cheeks, going down my face. And then I imagine it now filling up both hemispheres, both sides of my brain, okay? And it coating the inside of my head and filling the inside under that skull bone, this one here, and it, and then I work it down, okay? And you may find that you may feel blocked. You may not be able to necessarily work it down. That's okay. That's okay because you can work with these at any in any order, leaving this one here, going to that one, going to this one, going to that one, back and forth, back and forth until it all works together, okay? So the second one is that one that is, like I said, under your skull and at the top of your spine. This one I am I will often see as very murky at first when I begin working with somebody in their energy work. And I it's like a um I so I ask that that energy spin until it's pure white. Okay, so I'm just spinning it to sort of clean it out, right? And get that energy spinning quite onto uh, pure white. And then I imagine what's coming out of that crystal ball is this beautiful ribbon of light. So it's like a ribbon. Think of a, th a thick ribbon. Okay. A thick ribbon of light that wraps around every single vertebrae completely the next wrap overlapping the last wrap so that it completely wraps around the entire spine all the way down to the tailbone where when it gets to the tailbone it lights up that kundalini energy right that spark at the beat at the base of the tailbone and now I move that energy back and forth between the top of the spine, bringing it even up into the skull of my, of my head, excuse me, and down, down to um, the bottom of the spine again. Okay. And allowing that energy to, to just like pulse up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. The third one being that one underneath the, underneath the earth, 18 inches, I imagine it is also a crystal ball and it has sort of like electricity or lightning and it's like boom it's very comforting very soothing very lovely warm again very comforting energy and i imagine this beginning to come up through my feet and start working into my bones okay so then i imagine it going into my toe bones the top of my foot into my ankle up my um up to my um uh, shins thigh bones, spread out my hips, working now merging with that energy of that kundalini energy in my spine coming out down through my rib cage and across my shoulders and my shoulder blades there um, and a collarbone and chest plate and now into my arms and, um, and, uh, and my fingers. And then of course, coming all the way up into my skull, my face and my skull, you know, covering those bones. Again, now working with that energy of that liquid light that's come down, letting that fill up my entire body all the way down to my feet. So essentially what we're doing is we're bringing the lightning energy all the way up from the earth. We're bringing the um, higher self energy all the way down into the earth. So from above, like from below all the way up and from all the way up down below. Okay. And then now, and then, and then the energy, the Kundalini energy that's in your spine, I imagine, or ask my higher self, right? I imagine that it's now moving out into my nervous system. 
okay? So that it's soothing my nervous system. So if you think about infinite intelligence coming up from your spine, all of the confidence of who you are because the earth is completely supporting you. We have our confidence when we know that we're totally supported. This is where major confidence center is, or chakra is. So you're totally supported. So you get enormous amount of boost of, of confidence from the earth. And now you have the soothing, which is the opening within the nervous system and imagine it going all the way through your entire body and nervous system. And so it's creating a sense of relief and openness and sort of like a breath of fresh air within your body, total peace and relaxation. Okay. So I imagine that, that now all of these are sort of working together. They're combined. They're all moving freely throughout my body. And I ask that they permeate every organ, every cell, every molecule and cell of my body. Okay. So just saturate my entire body with this light um, and, um, with this, uh, um, with this energy, with this potent energy. Okay. And, um, and then I will be able to, from there, I then start working from the root chakra, just seeing it open up and bright. You'll notice that your root chakra is then open and bright, your sacral chakra open and bright. So now is where I see colors is the, you know, the colors that are associated with the chakras, the, the red for the root chakra, the, um, the orange for the sacral chakra, the bright yellow for the um, solar plexus chakra, the bright green for the heart chakra, the, the blue for the throat chakra, which is your ears and throat, feeling open, open, open. And then that third eye, blessed third eye and crown chakra being wide open. And then just, and then seeing that energy begin to now fill up my, the field, my auric field all the way around my body and think about like, that's just like this purification of yourself. And my guides have said, if you do this on a daily basis, you will not feel or experience the disruptions that are taking place through the bridge. You will be able to gracefully be able to make your moves and you will be able to confidently be able to move forward within your dreams, knowing yourself from your dreams, becoming your reality. So as you can see here, once we let go of that wound that had been hurting us so deeply, so intricately in everything that had to do with our life to now really being able to stand super strong, super bright within our own energy, totally activated within the, the you know, higher self, our activated with the emergence of our higher self in our human body. Okay. And I, I, I appreciate that. That's what was said right there because oftentimes I will see an emergence of an angelic being uh, from clients. I will see an emergence of like a diamond light body. It's just shimmery, like pure white diamonds um, glistening. And it's in the form of like if your human self were to be like cookie cuttered out, it's like kind of in the shape of a human. I will see golden light bodies. I will see these layers of light bodies showing up because we are multidimensional. We're multi-layered. So I will begin seeing these show up. Um, and emerging from, and that's when I know that it's like, boom, like it's, it's synced. Everything's happened. It's all, it's all uh, working together now. And really I, that took, you know, a few minutes to describe to you, but spending no more than about 20 minutes. And if you find yourself like kind of locked up doing this, just set the intention that your higher self will complete the process for you. And like, go up to like, get ready for the day, go take a shower, go do whatever it is that you do, you know, go, go on with your day, but set the intention and, and have that internal awareness that, that internal gaze on your emotions. And all of a sudden, you know, just a few minutes later, you'll feel that like this power up, this like, whoop, 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 you know, take place. And, uh, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's really fascinating. So, um, I, I really, I, I'm really interested. Again, this has been an extremely powerful way to start the year. Chiron wound healing, um, activating these light bodies within ourselves and, and, and the, the God spark within us. I'm so curious to see what's going to happen next week. Where we're, where we're going next. I haven't gotten that message yet, but I am really excited to find out and curious about what it's going to be about. But, um, but I know that this may be a challenging week for many people. Okay. The, um, the 11th through the 17th. And with that conjunction of the, of, of, um, Chiron 
in um, um, in the North Node in Aries on February nineteenth. It could get pretty loud, but but do not do not fear. Do not be in despair. Um, you were there, not only myself, but many people are teaching about how to um, how to purge this, how to let go, and um, and how to come out triumphant on the other side. Okay, so um, so blessings to all of you. Um, I love you all. Know that your higher selves absolutely adore you, and have your back. And we're it's like we came for this. We're ready for this. We're prepared for it. And please leave your comments about how this impacts your life. And um, I will see you next week. I love you all. Mm -hmm.